Portland State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple, it's simple, such a sad song. The one that, the one that we rely on. Welcome to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, brought to you by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Stacy, And I'm your co-host, Sarah. And today we will be talking about cancer-causing coffee and falling space stations. Oh my. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's not as horrible as it sounds. It, it does sound kind of drastic. Are you a big coffee drinker? Um, I do enjoy coffee, yes, so uh, I don't want it to cause cancer, but doesn't, I don't know, doesn't everything cause cancer? <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> so anyways, about the cancer-causing coffee, a California Superior Court judge has ruled that coffee beverages sold in the state have to carry a cancer warning. And just for clarification, for those of you who don't live in California, um, this is something that you will see on all kinds of things. There's all sorts of signs when you go places that say the state of California, I don't know, I've yeah, read it a million times. This is from uh, California's Proposition 65 that anything that contains things known to cause cancer has to right. have a warning label that says this contains it's, something known to cause cancer. So you see these signs everywhere that say this establishment, this this food, this whatever it is, this has properties known buying. to cause cancer. And so you see them everywhere. And now apparently we have to start putting them on our coffee. I'm Why? Actually, I am actually super surprised this didn't come up before because... So what it is, is Proposition 65 is from like the 70s when it was passed. Okay. And coffee has kind of always been, you know, done in a very similar way of roasting and then grinding and then putting right. in hot water. So when coffee is roasted, it actually creates this chemical called acrylamide. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. This, how it looks that's yes so acrylamide is actually it's naturally occurring it's not something they add into the coffee it just happens when they roast the coffee because it just naturally occurs when starchy things are roasted or burnt like if you burnt toast the black stuff would probably contain acrylamide okay and we eat burnt well some people eat some burnt people toast eat burnt i mean toast. I, okay so acrylamide has been found by researchers to be a carcinogen in animals but the research is not so clear on humans on whether or not it's cancerous to humans or not okay i mean uh, i don't know we drink we drink so much coffee i feel like in this country Shouldn't and maybe other countries that out by now? haven't they yeah i i don't even know i i've, I've drawn a blank on something intelligent to say um <laughs> so acrylamide it, it is cancerous in animals so they've they've apparently done studies in animals yes but they haven't necessarily done studies to see if people who have cancer are coffee drinkers or well I, mean? I think it's more they don't know at what level acrylamide would be considered cancerous in humans because right. you know what's cancerous to a mouse is not necessarily at that level cancerous to a human being but because coffee does contain this thing which is known to be a carcinogen a uh, nonprofit council for education excuse me, education and research on toxics sued to have coffee makers have to put that Prop 65 warning label on because it does have this thing we do know is cancerous to some things. Okay. So I'm thinking about my local Pete's coffee shop or Starbucks or mm -hmm. uh, my independent coffee shop or Dutch Brothers. I mean, there's just a coffee shop on every corner. Do they have to put it on the cup? Do they have to put a, post it in the shop? What do they have to do? I think they have to post it on anything they sell, but it kind of sounds like they'd have to put it up. I don't think they'd have to put it up in the shop because it's not like in the air. Mm -hmm. It's it's in the thing you drink. So it sounds like they'd have to put it most definitely on like if you go to Starbucks and you buy like 
a bottled coffee that's already made. It sounds like it must but definitely would have to be on those. Right. But then for ones, if you like pull up to the drive through window and get a freshly made cup of coffee, it's not clear whether or not that would be on the cup or just, hey, this whole shop makes coffee. <laughs> right. So obviously there's cancerous things acrylamide so if they have to put it on you know because you can buy in the grocery store the like let's say the starbucks iced or cold frappuccino or whatever it is that you can buy in the bottles so do they have to make different labels for the california bottles that they do in other states or will it still say this is known to the state of california and then somebody in let's say wisconsin is like it only causes cancer in california what now now i'm wondering because don't they have that on like alcohol right they also have this uh, cancer causing oh. label and we're from California. So it's just not right. It's normal we- to see it on an alcohol bottle. But now I'm wondering if you're like in, you know, Wisconsin or Washington, do you have these labels on your I- bottle or do they, is there specific factories that only make things that go to California? And so they have their own specific labels printed on the bottles. Well, now I need to check when I go to a different state, if I'm going to remember, because it's not like I, you know, spend yeah. a lot of time reading warning labels on things in other states. Um, that's really interesting. So, um, what does this? What what other repercussions are there? Other things that people are complaining about, or so? I mean, this is this was more of a not a complaint so much as a freak out. Oh my god, coffee causes cancer. What do I do? Oh, does right. this mean I can't drink coffee anymore? Because that would be the end of the world for some people. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's also I think because. It's not just, oh, this small mom and pop cafe. It's taking on, like you said, Starbucks and Pete's and big companies that are not only in other states, but in other countries to be like, oh, when you come to California, you have to do things a little differently. So people are talking about whether or not this is going to be a big lawsuit or they're going to take it to court or what's going to happen because they do have the right to challenge this ruling. The okay. companies do. Okay. They have until April 10th to file objections, although it's not clear whether or not they will, because evidently in things like this from superior court judges, the chances of having that overturned are very low. So it's not clear. I mean, Starbucks is a huge company and, you know, billions of dollars worth of coffee every year. So they they probably could afford a lawsuit, but it's not clear whether or not they would if it would be worth their while. Right. So um, back to our warning labels conversation, I was just thinking about it's not just the bottles, you know, going to the store to buy a bag of coffee to bring home. So they're going to yeah. start putting that on the bags of coffee, which only again in California or it sounds is like there it. a special sticker that they can just stick on the bag? I mean, I think it's like because some bottles also have the sticker where, oh, wait, no, I guess that would be for all states because I was going to say they have the sticker for the recycling for California where you get 10 cents or 5 cents or whatever right? But in Hawaii, yeah. but I guess that's actually on all bottles so. right whether you can recycle or not so yeah it's interesting to see well it'll be interesting to see if um in california people start drinking less coffee because of this i don't know if there'll be any studies. i can't imagine <laughs> i can't i can't too imagine many either. people would be like i mean I people don't coffee. bulk at spending six dollars for a cup of coffee so right. i doubt they'll be like ah it might cause cancer later and i mean i've never actually been like too freaked out to go into a place that has that sign saying this location has chemicals. you couldn't I'm go like, anywhere i'm like <laughs> eh, you know the, the amount that's probably here is minimal and i'm not going to be here that long and right. i mean it, it's it's something as simple as i think if a gas station has a microwave they have to put that up like oh yeah you know something i mean like i that, see yeah. something so these signs are everywhere mm-hmm. that, um we probably should all have them on our houses <laughs> this <laughs> dwelling contains california, coffee <laughs> california contains yeah Cal- instead of the sign you know the sign at the border should just stay this Welcome state <laughs> has many 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 things that could cause cancer at least 65 i think that is maybe i don't know if that's just a coincidence but that there were 65 known chemicals for prop 65 that they had to put it on oh nice. so at least 65 things in california that could cause cancer well and that was in the 70s so now there's probably, probably like 130 at least thousand i don't even know (laughs) oh i you know warning labels are good i just sometimes wonder 
are we taking them too far? I really don't know the answer to that question. I actually worry more that we're desensitizing people to them because again, you know, it's on everything. It's in so many businesses have to have this warning label that I, I, I will guarantee you I've walked into places and not noticed that sign. Right. Because your eyes just pass over it. You've seen it, it so it's, many it's times. It's part of the decor. It's part of the paint color. It's, it's just always there. Whatever. Right. Yeah. Well, on that note. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a short break and when we come back we will be talking about something that also sounds a bit scary a falling space station <gasps> stay tuned you're listening to the gsmc social media news podcast do you want to be healthier yet you just don't know what to do all these shows telling you this and that but nothing seems to work well listen close golden state media concepts has got something great for you the health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends healthy eating habits diet and everything about healthy living join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest but live it to the healthiest Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. Today we are talking about scary, scary things that could kill us. Yes, many things can kill us, well, especially in the state of California. <laughs> yes, especially here. So there's this other thing, not that we could actually have a warning label for it, though that would be nice. But evidently, there is a Chinese space station that will fall to Earth soon. How come? Uh, so, be, I mean, all space stations, I think, do have to fall to Earth at some point. Mm -hmm. But... China actually doesn't have control over this one, which is partly why people are freaking out, because they lost control over the space station back in 2016. It's not responding to anything they try and do with it. They can't really get in contact with it. Not that there's anybody there, but they're not getting, you know, any feedback from the computer or monitors or anything. OK, so it started coming in closer and closer to the Earth's orbit. And how big is this space station? Because when I think space station, I think like Star Trek and I'm thinking something ginormous. I mean, it's it's scary for, you know, an unattended thing falling out of the sky, but it's actually, it's about the size of a school bus. It's big enough. Okay. I mean, yeah, no, definitely don't want it to fall on <laughs> no, me. Just picture a school bus <laughs> just suddenly falling falling out of the sky. It's like a, a Wiley uh, E. Coyote com cartoon. Jeez, I can't talk. It's like a Wiley E. Cartoon. <laughs> coyote cartoon where something just falls out and hits you right although I've, unfortunately we don't all recover like wily coyote no we do not okay so when is this happening where is this happening what do we know that is partly why people are freaking out we kind of don't know there they can kind of track it the way they track any sort of satellite orbiting the earth right. but because they don't have control or contact with it that's somewhat iffy somewhat we actually know where it is somewhat. We're kind of guessing where it is based off of our mathematical projections. I mean, can we narrow it down to a continent? We can narrow it down to between 40 degrees north and 40 degrees south. <laughs> <laughs> so for most of the Earth, if you live on this planet, it's somewhere in there. Okay. Okay. Um, not helpful. All right. <laughs> so um, what I'm, I'm just... I'm just picturing uh, that book, Chicken Little. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. You yes. know, that we could all be freaking out that we are about to be hit by something the size of a school bus randomly falling onto our house, onto our car, onto our actual heads. Yeah, and and all the all the NASA and the space, you know, organizations that they're trying to tell people, don't freak out. It's actually not that likely to happen. First and foremost, as this thing falls to Earth, it's likely going to break apart right? just by going through the Earth's atmosphere. That tends to happen. And the likelihood of those pieces surviving going through the fieriness, I, I, didn't, I don't normally think of our atmosphere as fiery, but for some odd reason, when things go through it, it becomes really fiery. Yes. I mean, this is why we don't die from being hit by random meteors and asteroids yes. because they break up and they still hit the, the Earth, but they're not usually that big. Yeah. Unless so, it's a science fiction movie. Well or 
actually meant to come down not, right not just doing it on its own so first and foremost you know the chances of anything really big falling is minuscule but also even the chances of anyone getting hit is minuscule because even within that really large 43 to 43 degree area most of that is actually ocean mm-hmm. right. and the parts where there are land even a good portion of that is not populated okay so like for example the last not the last time, but the one that people know a lot about was when Skylab came down, even though that was somewhat more controlled, it wasn't fully controlled and it ended up covering like a huge swath of rural Australia. But they at least knew that's they could plan that better of, OK, this is where it's coming down mm-hmm. for this one. It's they they will know like within a couple of hours before it actually happens. Okay, so at least there's a little bit of warning. Hey, state of Oklahoma. Right? <laughs> or, hey, people in Afghanistan. I don't even know. I'm just randomly pointing, throwing out names of places. Um, okay. So th- there is a little bit of warning, though I don't know that we actually have really good warning systems for sky is falling situations right is there a, is there is it like an amber alert do we get a text on our phones that says <laughs> you might be hit by it's it's really not clear because and this is the strange thing china has no control over this so it's not clear how liable they are if it does fall and hit someone but if it does fall they still own the space station right so they can claim anything that does actually survive to the earth but then it's not clear if it survives to the earth and hits somebody if they'll be held responsible and who do you at that point do you sue china do right. you sue right, their exactly. space agency whatever that's called what, what who do you sue can you can you sue china even yeah i don't know i mean if you can try i'm sure has know. anyone ever been hit by something like this once that we know of. So back in 1997, a woman in Oklahoma walking in the park. That's where I got Oklahoma. I knew I read that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> a woman in Oklahoma walking in the park got hit by a small piece of space debris. And it wasn't even a whole space station was falling and she just got hit by that. There's just there's a bunch of junk actually floating around our planet, even yes, though we can't see it. Absolutely. And so those things fall to Earth all the time. She got hit on the shoulder. She was fine. It didn't hurt. It was probably a, more of a shock than anything else. What but, do you think are the odds of something actually? I mean, because I'm sure it's not very big, but to for that to fall and hit you in the exact place that you're standing at that moment. Yeah, that's one of the things researchers are trying to get out so people won't freak out because the actual odds of you being hit by a piece of space debris is 10 million times smaller than being struck by lightning. Wow. And I've never been struck by lightning. Yeah, I know, I don't really know anyone who ever has been. Yeah, I know it happens occasionally, but wow. Um, so the, the name, I like the name of this space station is Heavenly Palace, which, you know, I mean, it makes sense. I, I, it's I get, in the heavens. I mean, our first space station was named Skylab, so I get we're going on a theme about in the skies and the mm-hmm. heavens. But the fact that this thing is falling without control to Earth makes Heavenly Palace seem a little ironic. He- <laughs> it's, now it's like Heavenly Palace, Vengeful God. Just <laughs> like, like, it's almost like a written joke, but yeah, we didn't do this on purpose. So many options for the punchline. Um, huh. I mean, I'm thinking of people, people always talk about uh the frozen waste from airplanes Mm -hmm. falling and that's never really actually like i think that's also happened maybe once or twice so i don't think that this is something to necessarily lose sleep over but i assume people are i mean i kind of am even though like i know all the math and the possibilities are super super low and even with it i actually did freak out because they there are uh different organizations that have put up maps about the potential uh, possibility of where this this area will be covered of the falling place, and I totally did go <laughs> and look and see if I was in. Is Northern the area. California on that map? It is, yeah. Depending okay. on depending on which map you go to, and of course, as it gets closer to time, those maps get a bit more correct. But the one I saw had like everything below either Washington or Oregon's border was all in the possibility of being hit zone, and I was just like. 
<laughs> no, I have terrible, terrible luck. I never win things. I never win, you know, like raffles or giveaways or anything. This would probably be the one thing that I would be <laughs> like, you know, the odds are astronomical. And yet I'm the one person that got right. hit by a bus or a bus sized space station. Like you can never have it when you want it. But then when you don't want it, of course, that's when mm-hmm. it happens. And then 20 years from now, there will be two people on a podcast or whatever podcasts have morphed into saying, well, back in nine, in 2018, there's only one person that it was ever been hit by falling space debris <laughs> yes you'll you'll be famous you'll be historical well i'll be historical i don't i mean <laughs> i've never heard of lottie williams hi lottie if you're listening i well, i don't know why you'd be listening but hey in case you listen to the social media news podcast i'm glad that you only got hit on the shoulder and that you're okay i am too so we're going to take a short break uh we'll be back you're listening to the gsmc social media news podcast Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. Today we're talking about some really scary things. And part of that scary thing is Facebook and privacy. Have you heard about this whole whole debacle? Yes. Yes. Um, You know, there's always, every time you turn around, there's some kind of Facebook post being put out. You know, oh my gosh, Facebook now has the ability. First off, it's Facebook's going to charge you. There's always that going around. Oh, really? Um, you know, somebody will post at Facebook starting tomorrow. Facebook is going to charge you to have your account and people always fall for it. And then there's always, you know, Facebook is going to do this. So you need to go into these settings and do this so much so that there have been memes that have come up, you know, <laughs> in, in a week, the, uh, because of Facebook, the earth will fall into the sun. So go into your settings and change, <laughs> you know, to protect yourself from Facebook or for, to protect yourself from falling space stations, go into right. your settings Facebook will do that, <laughs> and yes. change. So, but this is actually, it's, it, it's, it's not, it, this is an actual thing as opposed to those which are not true. Yeah. So, so, I mean, this is kind of like, I get why everyone's mad about Facebook, but at the same time, this is not anything they purposefully did. Right. They, there was this company, Cambridge Analytica, which somehow managed to get into people's data without them knowing it Mm -hmm. and use that data to create targeted ads during the last presidential election, which I mean, that whole election is a whole nother controversial topic. Right. But the fact that, you know, they were using this data that people didn't even know they had given them access to, I think is what's really freaky about this. And that somehow that Facebook allowed that like, right. I mean, it is concerning that Facebook did allow that. And, and I don't, I don't have the exact quote in front of me. I mean, I know Mark Zuckerberg has made statements. Um, he kind of has said we didn't realize or something yeah, along those lines, which is concerning. concerning. Um, I heard, um, I was listening to NPR's wait, wait, don't tell me from last week. And they were talking about this. And one of the, um, one of the, the panelists on there was like, I mean, really, what kind of information are they using? They're shaking my picture of the quinoa I ate last week. I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah, there's nothing on my Facebook that's too too scary that I wouldn't want people to know. But at the same time, it is sort of terrifying that it's like you had no clue this was going on. This data mining, right. your, all your info, you know, what else is doing this? What else 
are they getting into? Right. And now they're, um, you can actually go into Facebook. Uh, this is this is a real thing. You can go into Facebook settings and uh, it will show you exactly what information you have. You can you can um, download all of your Facebook information. You can. So that's that's one thing that has come out of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, the access information and access your information section, and that allows users to see and delete posts. You can uh, you can pretty much change what is available on your Facebook. Uh, do you know? I don't know that I have heard if it was. I assume it accessed everything regardless of your privacy settings. Do you know the answer yeah, to that? that? That yeah, that's. I think that's why the the furor is all on that. Right, but I think. I mean, definitely that it access things irregardless of your privacy setting, but also just the fact that you didn't say, hey, you can access my info. Right. And that there was another, not at Cambridge Analytica, but there was another thing, a game on Facebook that... Yes, when the you, quiz or yeah, something. Where you went in and it, it could get like all your, your mobile phone data or something. Right. But yeah, usually, I mean, there's all those quizzes where I, I'll click on it and it'll say, this will give Facebook access or this quiz mm-hmm. access to this, this, and this. And I'm like, mm, no, uh, yeah. I, but I assume other people don't do that. It, well, I mean, I think I used, to, I did it a couple of times when I first got a Facebook and it just sort of seemed to me like, oh, it's just giving them permission to like post my score on my mm-hmm. profile or whatever that not that you're going to go in and find things about me, but that, you know, you can't post things for me on my Facebook unless I say, okay, yes, this can go on my post for Facebook. Right. That's, that's how I understood it. But sometimes those things say that this will give you, this will give XYZ quiz access to your public profile, which, okay, that's public. Um, all of your photos, all of your contact, yeah. your friend information. And I'm like, okay. I mean, at least they post it in that case. This is not something just that quiz, but then it doesn't sound like Cambridge Analytica had any kind of. You've agreed to whatever our fine print is, sort of. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. I don't know. Social media. It it definitely has created new ways of thinking about how we protect ourselves. I mean, the speaking of scary things, the world is kind of a scary yeah. place in terms of your personal information, stealing your identity, doing all of these things that can happen. Most but, definitely. Like I never, when that whole thing of, you, you know, if you want to sign up for a different website, do you want to sign up with your email or sign up with Facebook? I'm like, nope, nope, email. Do not, do not. I don't want any of my, I want to keep it as difficult as possible for someone who manages to hack into one thing to use that to hack into something else. Right. And I don't know where the I don't know where the line is on the spectrum between is between people who are like eh, whatever nothing matters I'm just going to do everything online it, to, to enter my password here do this and the people that are so far on the other end of the spectrum where they're they almost sound paranoid I, I don't know the paranoid aspect of, or the paranoid end of that spectrum might be the better place to be I mean but I think even with the paranoid people that's more and more just becoming a lost cause like mm-hmm. if you do anything just in the world with technology it's already out there yes so it's like unless you're going to be you know one of those people who like doesn't have electricity doesn't have a cell phone is out in the middle of the woods in a bunker then yeah you might be protected but for the rest of us to you know go to stores and swipe our cards or right log into yep. things on the internet we're we're all vulnerable Vul- vulnerable <laughs> very good vulnerable yes vulnerable. um yeah, and I assume, I don't know, do you, I mean, I, I, I'm just thinking of all the different ways that we can create, that I'm sure going forward, there's going to be more more companies that set up how to protect yourself online, how to protect your identity, you know, things. It's It'll be interesting to see how this evolves as social media evolves. I mean, it was, there was a movie, I don't even know how long ago, with Sandra Bullock called The Net. I mean, it, it's called yeah. The Net, so that tells you something. Does anybody mm-hmm. even call it The Net anymore? <laughs> um, that was hinting at a lot of this stuff, and that was probably 20 years ago, 15 maybe. Yeah, um, or that one, um, and now I'm completely blanking, that one Will Smith movie where he's like falsely accused of whatever, and they're like hacking into satellites to spy on him. And Yes, I don't remember the name of that either, but... Yeah, I mean, there's just, there's so many different, eh, we're all going to be killed by AI anyway. So (laughs) Terminator is coming, Skynet is coming. (laughs) Or we're just going to be killed by falling space station debris. And, and And like the space station, I think it's very interesting that it's not clear in this case either who's exactly responsible. 
Mm-hmm. Like, okay, Cambridge Analytica, obvi- obviously, because they did the wrong thing. But then, like, Facebook is some... People are definitely clamoring for Facebook to be responsible. They want Zuckerberg to, you know, uh, uh, talk before Congress. If I could talk, <laughs> probably, <laughs> to go before Congress and explain all that what happened. And, like, with the uh, the... Equifax was it Equifax last mm-hmm, year mm-hmm. that whole hacking thing where it's like yeah your data that you never actually fully gave us permission to have but that we totally can track with your social security number right. yeah that all got out and, and then sorry. they wanted you to go here go to this website and do something but then if you did that you were you it, couldn't do a lawsuit yes you yeah. were ineligible to be in part of any kind of class action lawsuit so that was sneaky yeah. I mean it's just, it's just oh it's just like even if I didn't want my data, you're allowed to have my data to a certain extent for some reason. Right. I don't know the answer. I mean, it's it feels very, I, I don't know, maybe I do want to go live in a bunker, except <laughs> that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> except for that reason. Right. But all the other things for a bunker, except that I don't. But uh, the, the speed with which technology is moving is a little bit scary just in terms of i'm not sure we can always keep up with it and then these kinds of things happen and make us aware so in some ways it's good that these types of things happen because then we are aware and we can take steps some people are taking the step of deleting their facebook account um which i mean i I had a friend tell me like they never thought this would happen to facebook that face that people would be talking about deleting their accounts but i'm like wasn't this what happened to myspace (laughs) We just were like, yeah, let's move on to something else. Right. So why was Facebook considered this huge, untouchable giant? Right. And, you know, Facebook, deleting your Facebook account at this point is kind of closing the barn door after the horse has gotten out. Uh, Your data is out there. Your data. most definitely is. Yeah. Uh, But I'm not saying that's not a valid choice. Obviously, if people want to delete their Facebook accounts, that's their prerogative. But it's already, (laughs) they already have it. Sorry. Well, I mean, so... Look, we're going to wrap up today. Yeah, you know, I think was, we uh, have nothing. We, we don't have a ne- nice, neat bow to tie up this um, Facebook thing. Uh, basically, this whole episode has been scary. something might kill you. <laughs> or or take your data and then become self-knowledgeable and then kill you. <laughs> and then kill. That's right. It's all about death, people, here at the Social Media News Podcast. <laughs> but on the plus side, you know, the likelihood of any of this is very low. So Excellent. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program